Rust Belt is a region of the United States characterized by intense industrial activity followed by decades of economic decline. Legacy contaminants such as metals and per polyfluoral alkyl substances, also known as PFAS, persist in populations, waterways, and soils. Metals and PFAS, just like a lot of other um, environmental chemicals, will uh, cause multiple health effects. Metals and PFAS can have effects on especially vulnerable um, populations. Um, this includes maternal health, but also developmental stages. They can cause human health concerns and health problems, such as increasing cholesterol, um, increasing liver enzymes, and even certain cancers. And it is important to protect human health by controlling these kinds of substances in our environment. The University of Pittsburgh's Rust Resilience Center is a collaboration of clinicians, uh, engineers, toxicologists, and epidemiologists working together to study the effects of these two major chemical classes, metals and PFAS. We want to understand how these contaminants affect populations, waterways, and soils so that we can remediate uh, contaminated areas and also impact policy changes to be the most meaningful to uh, local communities. When you think about all the different natural sources that are containing different chemical contaminants, um, some of them can leach into our water bodies, can be absorbed into our food that we are growing, and all of that can get into your plate that you're eating or the, the faucet that you're opening up to get your drinking water. There are many number of chemical contaminants that can go undetected and under the radar, and we are just understanding how to even measure them in the water system. Humans are exposed to environmental mixtures, not one chemical at a time. Many of the chemicals that we study have um, similar maybe um, health patterns or um, pathways, biological pathways. So you could be exposed to one or two or thousands of chemicals at very low levels, but the fact that there's this mixture effect, that they act sort of jointly, and then that can enhance the adverse effect. Because these um, patterns are usually very correlated, it, it challenges traditional methods. So we need new strategies to evaluate um, mixtures. When we think about the exposure of how does the environment, how do metals and PFAS in the environment eventually get into the home, one of the things you try to do as a researcher is you try to get uh, a subset of homes that really represents an example of the community. And so home-based monitoring is a chance where you actually go into a home, take small little dust samples or water samples, and actually take it back to the lab to see, well, what kinds of contaminants do you have with inside your home, or the things that are accumulating in your home? We are interested in what metals and PFAS, how they enhance liver disease that is caused by lifestyle choices. The way we work with metal mixtures in kidneys is we use a system called human kidney organoids or sometimes referred to as mini kidneys. And the way we are studying these, these mixtures is being able to do direct exposure of the mixtures to the organoids which are the equivalent of exposing it to a kidney directly without having to go through a circulatory system or metabolism that you would have in an organism. If you know or a clinician knows that somebody's been exposed chronically to, the, to these types of metal exposures and they're starting to see kidney dysfunction. If we can reliably predict what cell types are being damaged, this can focus their treatment. Hazardous chemicals such as lead, mercury, cadmium, and PFAS are accumulating in our environment, and as they accumulate, they lead to increased human health impacts, and we want to identify ways in which to stop the exposure and prevent additional impacts on people, and we know also that they are in our air, water, and soil, and so they're impacting our plants and our animals in the environment as well. We're looking for multiple ways where we can actually develop a technology to remediate these. That's a big initiative currently going on in our lab, to remove PFAS uh, you know, and metal combinations using you know, metal organic uh, frameworks. With computational simulations and with the experimental data, we're hoping to converge on some sort of optimal setup for this metal organic framework. And if we do, we can build it up into a, into a filter and then look to deploy it in a pilot experiment. The Oasis Farm and Fishery has been a long-term community partner. They're a grassroots initiative in the community looking to be a model for how to farm uh, in an urban environment in a sustainable manner. They're helping with a lettuce experiment, understanding how clay or biochar, if we mix that with the soil, 
How can that actually reduce the bioavailability or how much PFAS gets into lettuce? We're hoping that we're able to co-create solutions together and have a, a solid partnership. So the model can serve as an example that can translate to other places and other states. There are communities around the world where they are experiencing a disproportionate number of um, kidney disease patients, and we can go to these communities and engage with the communities in a way that we can better understand how environment poses a risk to their kidney health. But by doing so, we can also understand what are some of the same environmental variables in those communities that might be present in our own backyard here in the U.S. and inform the communities here in a way that we can improve um, kidney health outcomes here. Together we're making important discoveries that support effective interventions, remediation, and raising awareness of the major environmental health challenges of the Rust Belt region.